always prompting Moses to think about things. Always. He's always prompting him to consider not just your circumstance, but how the Lord, the Creator, is involved in the circumstance. How the Lord, our Creator, will take us out of the circumstance, even though we may feel like we don't have the ability. Hmm. That's an important aspect in every single instant of our lives because the Lord is interested in every aspect of our life. He's interested. Now that's my, that's this is a conclusion that I have and of course everyone who hears a message who reads the word can understand a little bit more about where the Lord is in my life, in your life. And that's important. It really is important. You know, here I am, you know, I'm younger than some of you. Maybe I'm the youngest person in here outside of Mary. <laughs> And so I, 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 I wonder, <coughs> I wonder if I'm being presumptuous to, to 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 speak about things that you all know better than I do. Is it presumptuous of me to say, well, the Lord is involved in our lives? You all know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Every aspect of our life, yeah. not some of them, not some aspect but every aspect. And here's what I'm saying. All the good aspects of our lives, he's involved in every single one of those. We know that. But what do we consider good? Good question. That's something we need, we need to think about that. What's good? Now when I say what's good, what's perfect? in our life. Hmm. If, she if answered we, if, you. If, if we are not, <laughs> and we, I mean, we know we're not perfect. We're sitting around, we're, we're running around on, on the little uh, devices here. We can't, we can't, you know, sometimes we just can't seem to be young again. <laughs> But yet, wait a minute, inside our minds we are young, aren't we? We've got these memories inside there banging back and forth, and they're all young memories. Every single one of them, we dredge them up sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes they just pop out. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we go, holy smoke, I remember that. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Well, what's good about that? Our Creator gave us all of that ability. That's what's good about that, the fact that He gave us this. Now what we do with it, it might be good, it might be evil, it might be disastrous. There's all kinds of things that it could be. What do we do with the information that He presents us with? What do we do? I'm gonna tell you about Christianity before I go back to Moses and we're going to talk about him in a minute. And we're going to also talk about Pharaoh and the ten plagues that were foisted off on Pharaoh and the whole Egyptian people. We'll talk about that in a few minutes too. But I want to ask you all, who in here is a Christian? Two Christians, three Christians. All right, now let's find out what constitutes being a Christian. Can we have Christianity forced on us? No. It can, it can be forced on us through preaching. I could force 
information into the assembly here. I could do that. If I force Jesus on someone, what's going to happen, do you think? Ain't going to work. Most of the time, any anyone who has something forced on them, they're going to reject it. We all remember when we were little kids, and we <laughs> wanted what we wanted. <laughs> and our mom and or dad said, no. Nope. We learned fairly early on what no meant. <laughs> and it, no could mean a swat on the butt, or it could mean a slap in the face. It could be anything. But we would learn from the no. That's force. Now, some of our parents encouraged us to see the good selection versus the evil selection. Some of our parents were cognizant enough that they could present that to us as children. Here's the difference between you getting your way now and me telling you you need to do it this way and you follow along with my way for a little bit, you'll find out that it's a better way. That's, uh, that's a fundamental with parents. Or are we all parents in here? Everybody has at least one child. There we go. At least one. Yeah. They're all, all parents in here. So we've been through that. We know how children are. They are reluctant to be obedient in certain circumstances. <laughs> Sometimes they're, you know, okay, we'll go off there. We're going to go off and, you know, and play. You know, run outside and play. Okay, they go out and play. But be home before the lights come on. Or right around the time the lights come on, come on home. Okay, that's... <coughs> So, we can have things forced on us, or we can do something that we want to do because it's internal, voluntary. We volu Many of us in here volunteer to help someone else. Maybe we saw someone in need and we went to help them. Maybe we, you know, we take out our wallet and we help out that way. Maybe we are uh, of a mind to buy food for someone who doesn't have any food. Or maybe we want to serve at a, at a place where uh, a kitchen, a soup kitchen or something like that. Now, <clears throat> that's coming from inside us. We probably learned that in the house with our brothers and sisters, we probably learn how to be helpful, to volunteer our time inside the house. Instead of doing this, we do a chore. Instead of playing, we do a chore. We do, you know, we do something else that helps the house go along. <clears throat> so we understand, I think, that there is a difference between being forced to do something and voluntary. Insofar as Jesus is concerned, he wants the love that we have for him to be voluntary. Yes. He also mm -hmm. wants us to commit to his program. And he wants us to commit all the time. There is never a moment when we're not thinking and doing and being a part of the Jesus program. <laughs> What's the Jesus program? Jesus program is, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. 